Yo, yo, what's good? It's your boy Abram Mitchell back again with another episode, Triple M Method, the podcast. And today I have another wonderful, amazing, luxurious guest with me today. Everybody say what's up to Kia. Hey, hey. They can't hear you. They, well, they can hear you. <laughs> we can't hear them, but we got Hello. Kia in the house, one of our very own uh, students in the program. And it's been amazing to see Kia's uh, career so far and, you know, just to see the trajectory that I already know that she's on. So uh, we wanted to bring her on the podcast to tell our story and just talk about uh, everything that's gone down so far. So Kia. Hey. What's good? What's up? How you feeling? Feeling great. You feeling good? Feeling swell, doing well. That's good. That's good. So <laughs> uh, talk to the people. Tell them. Let them know where you're from. Yeah. So I'm born and raised from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, grew up in Antioch. Y'all unicorns out here. Yeah, we I'm unicorns. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> yeah, grew up in Antioch in East Nashville. Um, out east. Out east. What's the longest <laughs> app? All right, but no, I grew up in East Nashville. Started really paying attention to real estate within the last six to eight months. Um, worked full time in tech, and then. Mm -hmm. Kind of had a conversation of what am I going to do with these checks? I need to be investing them somewhere in, in the last six months. I mean, what are we on? House number four? Mm -hmm. so, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So yeah. grew up in Nashville. I, I like to ask everyone that's from Nashville, how you feel like, because this city is totally different from yeah. when you were coming up versus where it's at now. Because mm -hmm. I moved here five years ago and I feel like it's a whole different scene. So. How's that like just experiencing the high gentrification uh, so rapidly? Yeah, like, I feel like it's been a change, but it's an expected change, right? Okay. As Nashville continues to grow, I think it's something that you know is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You actually made me think of this. We had a conversation. I asked you, you're making new development. How do you feel like that's mm -hmm. somebody's grandma house? Mm -hmm. um, and it made me really sit there and reflect. And you said, hey, it's going to happen with or without you. So you're going to be on the right side of history or the wrong one. Yeah. So I think, hey, it's something that was bound to happen. And yeah. you just got to get on the way. Nah, it is. Like, I tell everybody that. that I mean, whether gentrification is good or bad, whatever it is, uh, you control it by doing it, yeah. by getting in. You know, nobody's stopping you from getting into this field. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people in Nashville has gotten into real estate yeah. uh, because of, you know, just what's happened in this market in the last 10 years or so. Uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I agree. You know, so uh, I just tell people, like, I mean, if you want to, you know, be the future or you want to dictate how the future looks, then get in there. Yeah. Get in there, play the game, you know, flip some houses, build some houses and keep some. You know I what I'm saying? So uh, what? What do you think like ultimately brought you to real estate? Like what is that a passion you always had or like you just woke up one day, see me on Instagram, was like yeah. I want to do this? Or, <laughs> how was yeah. it? So for me, real estate has always been something that I feel like my family has pushed me towards, but okay. I I ignored it. It was like, oh no, everybody's a real estate agent, but I didn't know how to get into real estate other than being an agent. Okay. So being on Instagram, I found you, I found Paul, I found other people kind of in the community and I was like, oh, I want that. Yeah. And then I started <laughs> listening to your story and I was like, wait a minute, like he's doing this and he's how old and like, how did he start? And he's grown so much. So it allowed me to say, okay, hey, I'm going to make this a reality. Like I need to be two feet you know, two feet in and just mm. make it happen. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you, um, right now you're in the sales job, yeah. in the sales role. Mm -hmm. How is that? I love it. I love okay. sales. You are uh, medical sales, technology, you say? Tech. tech. Mm -hmm. Can you like expand on that? What, yeah, what exactly? so I got into tech sales by accident. All right. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting into it by accident, <laughs> but I started working at Sprint probably about six seven years ago okay and then phone a, company right yeah phone company All right. selling phones yeah it's spread right. so if you're at the madison store you know me very well but <laughs> um <laughs> Started selling phones at Sprint, then left there, went to um, Dell, which is a pretty big company. And it just kind of hit. It was like, oh, I'm really good at this. I can mm -hmm. really get to meet people. I love technology because it's ever changing. Um, and slowly I started making more and more money. So once I hit six figures, I thought I made it. And I yeah. was like, I'm here. Well, you did. You made I it somewhere. I mean, I six did. figures. Not many people make six figures yeah. at a job. You know yeah. what I mean? So, that's a big accomplishment. It, was, it is. 
Not saying it is, mm. um, but for me, it was also a big mindset shift to know that that was possible yeah. because I was raised by a single mom. She was a local school teacher. She didn't make a lot. Mm -hmm. So for me to make six figures was a dream. I was mm -hmm. like, this is it. I have made yeah. it. I don't want nothing else. But then as I started talking to more people in tech, they were telling me, nah, you need to invest. Yeah. Like, you know what we're doing? We're buying houses. Like buying houses, how y'all do that? Like mm. we make that much money? Yeah. <laughs> she said we make that. <laughs> how y'all doing do that? that? <laughs> so then that's what it made me re like really take my mindset and say, you know what, you're right. Like I need to start taking my commission checks and buying houses. Like mm. I need to put it somewhere. Again, came across you, Paul, Felipe, and I was like, oh, I can flip houses. It's not as hard as I think. Or hey, mm. I can wholesale houses and make a little bit more and scale vertically. So it made sense. No, nah, that's what's up. I gotta ask you this, huh? What's up? Working at Sprint, how was that? Like, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. You know, a lot of customer complaints. Because <laughs> man, bro, Sprint, I lost some years dealing with that connection. I was, <laughs> I was an assistant manager at Sprint. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was very. So funny. you was right there at the front. I was. Because I'm one on the phone that's like, well, I get this from my mom. I want to talk to your boss. Who the manager? Is it's there? me. So Kia, get on the phone. How that conversation go? Hey, how you doing? Can I help you? I understand you're upset. I would be upset too. Oh, customer service, they suck, I know. How about you come in the store and we can talk about it? Just pay that bill. Yeah, and they pay that bill, they walk out with two speakers. It works. It's a woman. We good, bill. we good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, uh, you, would you say your, the skills like from working at Sprint, working at Dell, has that translated into your real estate career? Yeah, because. It's all about knowing, it's about who you know, not what mm -hmm. you know. And if you can build a relationship with anyone, I mean, mm -hmm. that goes everywhere. Yeah. So at Sprint, I started actually at the Brentwood store, okay. which was a huge shift for me. Um, and once I understood that clientele, I was like, oh, I can do this anywhere. Mm -hmm. So then when they moved me, moved me to Madison, I was like, oh, okay, I'm home. Like yeah. it felt like home. Yeah. So as I started to know my client base, as long as I knew how to talk to you and I could sell to you and I knew how to invoke your emotion, it was kind of like, okay, cool. This mm -hmm. is going to work. Yeah. And it translates very well into like wholesaling real estate, right? You mm -hmm. got to know their motivation and their timeline and what are their needs and really get to know what their mindset is. Yeah. Nah, so wholesaling real estate, is that like you you just woke up one day and seen it on Instagram or you seen it from like me specifically or you knew about yeah. it already? I saw it from you specifically. Okay, so, so like, you didn't even know what wholesaling no. was. So okay. when I started, I was more so in real estate. I was more so focused on like, hey, how can I go and buy houses? Like, yeah. I would just want to buy houses and rent them out. Okay, and so then, the rental, rental yeah, game. The rental game. The passive Felipe. income. Yeah, yeah, passive income. And then I found your page and I was like, wholesale? Like, what is this? Like, what mm -hmm. is he doing? Yeah. And then I started to really do more research and I was like, you telling me they flip their houses? On and paper. They, on paper? Like, yeah. no license? Not buying it, none of that. <laughs> I can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is transferable. Mm -hmm. So. As I started watching you and your progression, I was like, okay, I need to learn how to do that. And I yeah. need to get into a community that can teach me how to do that. Mm -hmm. so. so you got into the community. What's, yeah. what's been like your number one takeaway from it so far? Because you've been in for about six months now. Yeah. So what's like your favorite part of the community and being part of it? That's a good question. I would say the people. The people. And the reason why I say the people is not only getting to know like you, Aaron Carter, but getting to know the other people who are wholesaling, yeah. we build a bond. Like, mm -hmm. love Ryan. Shout yeah. out to you, Ryan. Yeah, shout out to uh, <laughs> Ryan. Ryan episode going live today. Love Ryan. <laughs> um, love uh, Clarice. Like, love Whitney. I get to meet so many different people, and yeah. it's really helped propel, I feel like, my success by mm -hmm. getting to know those people. That energy, like, it, it's, it's contagious. You yeah. know, I come up in that environment. I'm an athlete. Yeah. So, like, playing football, like, we just understand Teamwork make the dream work. We understand body language. We understand community, energy, yeah. you know, rooting for each other. And I took those skills and translated it into, you know, real estate, into the community, everything. Because I know you wake up one day and, you know, people always talk about, I want to get around like-minded people. Yeah. I want to be around people that think like me, have the same goals. Well, the number one way to do that is to join the community. I agree. You know, I don't care if it's real estate. I don't care if it's tech, I don't care if it's doing makeup, hair, yep. if you invest into yourself or whatever it is and take the time, time or money to join another community, 
with people that did the same thing to get in that community, then what do you think? You're going to run into people yeah. that think like you. You're going to run into people that like the same things as, um, as you, and you might run into your next partner. I agree. You know, somebody you can make money with. So uh, that's the whole goal is to build a community where everyone has, like, that safe space where it's like, okay, I could go here and get service through other people that's in yeah. the community, not even just... You know, the, the community itself is great, the information, yeah. the material, the trainings, but, you know, sometimes, you know, just picking up the phone, talking to a Ryan or the Sotos or yeah. somebody in the community and just letting them know, look, this is what's going on on my deal. Have you been through a situation like this before? It's great getting that perspective, you know? I agree. So Shout out to the Sotos, too. Like, yeah. I called Soto, and I'm like, yeah. can you come walk this house with me? Like, and he comes, yeah. Yeah, he, and I was like, hey, here's my timeline. What do you think of this? What would you change? And mm -hmm. I think that's so important. I've been in other masterminds where I've met people, and they've lended money to me because they believed in the dream. Yeah. I think it's really important to, like, emphasize the point of being in the room mm -hmm. because once you're in the room with the right people anything can happen yeah the possibilities because yeah. i mean number one thing humans do is communicate yeah. so if you're in the room and people communicating some things you might not take but other things you know it only 100%. take one piece of information that can make you a whole lot of money or save you a whole lot of time uh, both of them is great so uh you've been in it for about six months so far you learned the skill of wholesaling which essentially is sourcing deals. Yeah. How important would you say that is um, in your business to learn deal sourcing? Very important. So okay. like our best deal came from us sourcing that deal. Okay. Um, what what kind? Do you so source? cold call text. Cold call cold calling. Okay. So we, cold call. It was an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Um. But we're the seller and I now are like friends. I like okay. to think that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're like best friends. He texts me. He's like, oh my gosh, thank. <laughs> I'll say it like that. Thanks for taking care of my mom. I love her. She's super sweet. Um, but yeah, our best deal was, it is the deal that I'm currently working on out of Madison, Tennessee. Okay. And we got it through cold calling. I met up with them in person. Mm -hmm. um, I was just very accommodating as well for his particular mom's situation. Mm -hmm. um, but we bought that house for 155 originally. I thought I was only going to be able to sell it uh, if we sold it for about 300 but um, we're actually going to keep it, and with us keeping it, we can sell it for like 385 so. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you go flip it. You straight out flip flipping it. it. You don't want to keep that one in the room. No, no, I'm going to keep it. Oh, so okay. at first I was going to flip it. I was like, we can sell it for 385 make make 100, 100 grand after yeah. all the fees. But then after I analyzed it, I said, oh, it makes so much more sense to keep it throw a line of credit on it, rinse, repeat, go buy more. Okay. So you just got a little high level with that. Back that up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you Back just <laughs> basically said you're not going to make $100,000 right now. No. So the other side of it got to be better. So it is better. Talk yeah. a little bit about what goes into that decision to keep a property versus making a hundred grand because yeah you know, a lot of people won't make a hundred grand you know? i know i know okay <laughs> so yeah um with that particular house the hundred grand was like yeah this is great this is a play but knowing that i could keep it for one tax benefits mm -hmm. to the amount of equity that would be in the home okay so knowing i bought it for 155 it'll be worth 385 that's 230,000 worth of, of equity of equity yeah. that i can tap into mm -hmm. so to me instead of selling that um, I much rather keep that for me to continue to kind of rinse and repeat that process to continue mm. to buy homes. Okay, so rinsing, you said tapping into the equity, rinsing and repeating. Talk yeah. about that. How you go tap into the equity? Yeah, so getting a line of credit okay. uh, on that particular equity and then taking that equity and going to buy more homes. Um, so, yeah, just that. And a lot of people don't even know that. Yeah. Like, where, where'd you learn that from, like, that you could get the line of credit? Yeah, so I learned that through my own experience. Um, yeah. I learned it, one, through a mentor, so I learned it through Felipe, but two, I also learned it by doing that. That's how I got started in flipping, is I yeah. took equity out of my primary home okay. and started. Okay. Now, you were smart enough to buy a house in Nashville. Yes, I was. In yeah. 2020, too, and, every, oh, okay. and everybody was scared. Yeah, so, so you got buy my house for 320 it's worth 520 now. Oh, so you got a good little line of credit on that one. And the good thing about the HELOCs is that it's... It's almost the same thing as having the 100K cash, 
Yep. But it, it's tax free. Like it's tax free. You don't get taxed on it. So. It's tax free. Would you use that money to go buy leather purses or no, Bentleys? No. Or? No, I go buy houses. <laughs> okay, so you go buy houses. <laughs> I go buy houses. That's rule number one. So if you go pull out a HELOC, buy, you're using buy it, a house. Buy real estate. Yes. Okay, cool. So you're not using this money to just live and live that lifestyle, none of that. No. Using that to grow the portfolio. So that's what makes it make sense to keep that one instead of just selling it mm -hmm. and then ultimately paying taxes on that 100 k and then yep. having to go find another deal, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas... The equity in that home is going to continue to grow. Like, it's you got 385 right now in five, 10 years. That, that house is probably fine. going to be worth like 500 grand. Exactly. Just because that area. And I mean, bringing that back up, knowing how Nashville has grown and seeing the gentrification throughout Nashville, mm -hmm. it was a strategic play to know, hey, in five years, that house is going to be triple, maybe quadruple of what I bought it for. Exactly. So, um, and then you get put, you putting tenants in there. So yeah. they go pay for it. Yeah, I'm going to make an Airbnb. Oh, you're going to Airbnb it. So you're going to get some decent cash flow on it. That Yeah, that's like the triple threat right there. Where you get a yeah. deal deep enough to where you can renovate it, have enough equity to pull out a decent um, line of credit against it. Mm -hmm. Also, you're getting the cash flow. Mm -hmm. And you could do the cost segregation study on it. So yep. there's a lot of benefits in owning real estate. And that all came from simply reaching out to somebody yeah. and asking them if they would consider selling. 100%. How many more times do you think you want to do that? As many as I can. <laughs> How many times? A hundred times, two hundred times. I'm not stopping. <laughs> Y'all want to sell a house? That's happening. Send it, send it, hey, if you want to sell a house, send it to Kia. She yes. buying. So Some what's pros. What's been like your uh, biggest learning lesson, a learning curve since being in it? Yeah, I, I would say I've had a lot of learning lessons. I think the biggest one that I'm learning right now is to prepare for the worst. Okay. Um, I'm an optimist. So like for me, I'm like, oh, this is the best thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. But I'm learning like, hey, also look at what the worst thing is going to happen and be ready to kind of settle in between. Yeah. In real estate, you got to be good at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, you get the, oh, I got this, yeah. this. You got this, you're like, all right, cool. You might get to spend uh -huh. some of that money for you to come yeah. in. Then closing day come and it's like, ah. Oh, Where'd my money go? You know, we got this fee, we got that, so. Yeah, that's you know, what that's happened cool. with our, our first flip. I got excited. I did my numbers and I was like, oh, I'm going to sell it for three, three thirty, three forty. Mm -hmm. Got my appraisal back. They were like, nah, you selling this for three ten. Yeah, like so that's like 20, 30K of profit. That's what I'm saying. I, I was excited. Right I was like, I'm eating. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Falling right off there. Falling right off there. Exactly. But we'll still make a profit. But mm -hmm. I think it's important to kind of keep that in mind while you're doing it real estate. Yeah. Because I didn't. And it kind of smacked me a little harder than I thought it would. So, it's all good. You'll yeah. be good. Oh, I'm still going to win. Okay. So <laughs> what's like your main focus right now with your business? Like as far as scaling and moving forward with it? Rinsing and repeat. Okay. I think that's super important. So like just getting, being the best of what you do before you move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. I'm very like, hey, I want to be good at everything. But in real estate, I think it's really important to master one thing before you go on to the next. Mm -hmm. Be Do it so well, you can do it in your sleep. Yeah. Like perfect it. So that's what I'm focusing on is how can I perfect real, um, wholesaling? How can I perfect fixing and flipping? So hopefully in the next two quarters, I can look at new development. I mean, mm. my new development, I want to go into the wedding industry because that's what I'm in already. Okay. But for right now, just really focusing on how can I flip the best and how can I find my leads the best. And ultimately, you'll use those funds yeah. to funnel it into developments? Yep. Okay. Nice. Now, you do a lot. I do. You do a lot. lot. Like, you're, you're a big risk taker because you're <laughs> I like, am. I want wholesale, well, fix it, do flip, it. develop, and you, and you do it, though. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, how do you like, cause I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you're black yeah. and a woman yeah. in real estate. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like the lowest minority. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not a lot no. of you in it, in the space. So like, how do you like, for someone that is the same as you, like, what would you tell them when they're thinking about getting into it? Cause that could be a little scary. You it know? can be scary. Yeah. So. I can even back this up further than six to eight months ago when I really started taking action. About mm -hmm. a year and a half, two years ago, I started reaching out to different people in real estate. Okay. It was like, hey, will you mentor me? And I mm -hmm. got a lot of no's yeah. because I was a woman. Yeah. Um, and it was like, nah, 
Like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, I got a wife. And I'm like, it's not like that. I just want to learn. Like, you just want to learn, yeah. <laughs> um, but it gets lonely. And I think what's really important is just to remember your why. Because mm -hmm. this isn't my first time being the only one in the room. Okay. Uh, being in tech, it's the exact same way. Yeah. So I'm usually the only one in the room. Yeah. So I think for me, what's super important is to build a platform to allow other women that do look like me to know, hey, you can do this. Yeah. Just keep your head up and remember your goal. Yeah. Keep pushing because, yeah. I mean, you don't need everybody to help you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You only need, like, I mean, most of us are a few relationships away yeah. from, you know, getting everything that we need. But I mean, that's... I like that point that you made that focus on your why. Yeah. Like focus on why I got into this because no matter who says no or who tries to stop it, they can't really stop what's destined. They can't really stop what you know, what's that's in your so vision true. and what your goals are. So And that's what I live by, like no man, no thing, <laughs> no spirit can stop what's for me. Yeah. It's already written. And what I'm learning is you usually are one connection away from where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Like literally getting started finding the funding for our first flip came from a mentor I had at my previous job. Okay. And they straight up told me the lender was like, I wouldn't have lended to you because you're new. Like I don't lend to new investors, but yeah. since you know this person, I'm gonna give you the funds. Yeah. And that really kind of took me aback because it was like, whoa, what? Like mm -hmm. just because I know him, yeah. And as we started talking more, he was like, okay, you do good on this. Let me start introducing you to other people. And I think it's really important to network and just rem remember you can be the only one now, but like five years from now, you'll probably, you probably won't be. So yeah. Just continue to do what you need to do. And, and, and that's how it was like when you, you got to have that vision because yeah. you get into the game, you hear people saying things like that and you're like, damn, it seems so far away. But yeah. then you look up you five years in the game and you literally have a connection, bro. Wholesaling real estate is crazy because yes. we, we the plugs. Like we New connected plug. with the lenders, we connected with yes. the buyers, we connected with the bankers, we connected with the contractors, the subs, anything, you know, and you built this massive team and provide value at the same time. Yes. And then, and this is why I love preaching. Like if you want to get into real estate, Start wholesaling is the avenue. I a hundred percent agree. And it's not yeah. even just like, a capital standpoint, because I think that's a lot of people. A lot of people don't talk about that. Yeah. That was probably one of my biggest mistakes too. Was I underestimated the amount of capital that I needed yeah. to just buy and hold? Yeah. So I was kind of like, oh, I'm buying everything. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I ran out of money. What this am I doing? This two hundred, three hundred dollars a month <laughs> right. ain't, 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 ain't up right now. This ain't, yeah. this ain't the math ain't math. The math ain't math right so now. So then I realized, like, hey, doing the wholesale, that's not only creating the network because, like I said, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Yeah. But it's also allowing me to keep the capital that I need to build a strong foundation for my other like avenues. Yeah. So I want, I, I think that's really big for people to know. Start with wholesaling. I also feel it like it's almost I don't want to say the easiest but no nah, it's the easiest it's the easiest yeah, like, it's, the easiest. like <laughs> it's not easy need... but it's the easiest one to yeah, get into like it is. The, the barrier of entry is very low from like a capital standpoint from a the competition learning curve. Standpoint. yeah the yeah. learning curve you may have a lot of competition but i think if you're the best at what you're doing you're perfecting your craft nobody can compete with yeah you. And if you work, I mean, people, like, sometimes people just give other people too much credit. Like, yes. people, like, <laughs> you know, you put in your work, you know, you put in, put your head down, do what's necessary, talk to people every day. You're going to come across those leads. Um, you're going to, you know, start finding out your strategies that work for you in the marketplace. And it's going to compound. And um, I like what you said earlier about it's not about uh, what you know, it's about who you know. Yeah. And I tell people, like, I like to take it even, even a step further. It's about who knows you yep. and what they know you for. Yep. So at the end of the day, I know LeBron James. Yeah. He don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> but what if LeBron knew me as for the real best estate. real estate investor yeah. in his phone book? You know, so every time he thinks about real estate, he's going to call me. Yeah. So as a wholesaler that's sourcing deals at a deep discount and then selling it to other investors to make a profit, just think of the value you're providing to someone else because this game is con is you know relatively is new so yeah. real estate people's been people been doing real estate for hundreds hundreds of years but wholesaling has become you know popular yeah. recently so normally there wasn't you know someone sourcing these deals going direct to the seller 
So just think about the amount of value you're providing in the marketplace by sourcing these deals. Now these people know, hey, Kia has sold me five good deals this year that I've made a quarter million dollars on. Yep. Think of what that person would do for you in return. Yeah. You know, so it makes that transition a lot easier. Whenever I made the transition, the first people I went to was the people I was selling deals to. Yep. Hey, who are you using to buy this deal? Who's the best contractors? You know, yeah. what should I be looking out for? What, you know, what's the best exit strategy on this deal? And they would let me know easily because, I mean, I wasn't just trying to take, take, take. And, you provided yeah. value at the same time. so. And I think that's super important is to remember to provide value. Yeah. Sometimes it's not always about the take. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can give a little bit more and you're going to get more in the future. Yes. So like, for example, you lock up a deal. I'm okay with selling a deal for maybe 5, 10K if that's going to get me a plug that's going to help me on my, my next Of flip. course. It's of kind course. of playing a strategic long game. Yeah, so. it is. It is because any game, the, the well game is a yeah. long game. You know, there's nothing quick about this. You'll have, you know, great wins, big wins that seem quick. But at the end of the day, behind every successful story or successful deal, it's a long, long pipeline yeah. of work, um, a lot of lessons, uh, failures sometimes, you know, and ultimately to get to that big dub. Yeah. So uh, before I let you go, I want you yeah. to uh, kind of leave the people with uh, what's like your largest takeaway since you got into real estate is like a certain book you've read a certain deal that you learned about, you know, what would you kind of want to leave the people with? I say once you start, you can't stop. It's okay. like getting tattoos. It's mighty addicting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like once you start, you won't stop. And I mm -hmm. think the most important thing is to start. Yeah. A lot of people psych themselves out before they even get going. And mm -hmm. like once you actually get going, the momentum is there. It builds itself. You build off of it. Yeah. To know that what I know now, if I would have known that years ago, I would have started years ago. Yeah. Because it was like, what, six months and I'm already on house number four? Mm. That's insane to me. So but six months in, you're on your fourth flip. I'm on fourth house. What do you I'm think you're going to make out of those, those four? Yeah, I mean, the one that I told you about, Madison, 230000 in equity. Uh, one I got in um, South Carolina, $75,000 worth of equity. And then I'm, I'm keeping those, so that's what I'm saying, equity. And then the one in Clarksville that I have on the market, I should walk away with about thirty to forty thousand dollars. And that's after I pay my lenders back and pay myself Everything. back. Everything. Yeah. That's a good six months. It's a great six months. You on the roll. <laughs> you are on the roll. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, y'all heard it. Don't stop. Get into yeah. it. You learn the lessons. You learn the best about do it, doing it. Uh, that's what a lot of my mentors told me. Fell forward. Yeah. I've had deals that I've lost 150 grand on, but still made money. Yep. So what I mean by that is I lost profit. I sold it too low, yep. but I still made money on that deal. And most importantly, I learned, you know, a new piece of information. And a lot of the times you don't learn that information until you get in the field and do it. Yep. Like no mentorship, no book, no uh, training is going to be able to cover every single part of any field especially real estate because at the end of the day like once you get into a flip you know it's kind of like you you on your own you know you, you, go, own. you might run into this you might run into that you on your own but i do i do agree like learning it in the field like you say getting the trenches it makes all the difference yes yeah, so it does started. so that wraps up another wonderful episode the word of this podcast is momentum y'all yeah. so start today don't stop we out Oh, that was amazing. Um, that was good. I, you did see, well. I, told you, I, I need to practice. No, nah, you did well. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. I like the energy on it. <laughs>